Hello and welcome to the consoletrading.com video on basic MIDI setup in Graname 2 3.1. Today we'll be covering just basically setting up uh, a single MIDI device into a Graname 2 on PC session. Now this differs from the console a bit simply because you can't use, currently you can't use a USB MIDI device into the back of a console. Uh, if you need to use a MIDI device into a console, you'd probably need to use a laptop to take the USB MIDI devices in and then spit it out via just a normal MIDI cable, which is possible and may be covered in a future video if there's enough interest. Now what I've got here is just a bunch of toggle flash keys. Uh, the information that we need to know uh, here is just that their numbers are 101 through 116. Of course, you could use any number you wanted. So if you were using a, you know, a, a command wing or something, you could start your numbers at 107 so that you've still got the six flash buttons across the bottom. Or you could start at 116 if you had a light console. Or if you're using a full-size console, or programming for a full-size console, sorry, uh, and you wanted the buttons and you were using the advanced MIDI setup, you could uh, go 131 and above. It all depends on the way you're setting up your system. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define the MIDI device. So we go clicking on the little yellow circle, options, MIDI, and then we need to select the MIDI in device as the device you're using. So obviously this will depend on the device you're using. In my case, I'm using a MIDI fighter Spectra. We're no, we don't need to set an out device, so we'll leave it the way it is, which was just internal MIDI which was set up from our, uh, from our video yesterday that we recorded for MIDI time coding. Uh, we need, also need to make sure that the MIDI from the on PC command wing is set to no if we're using USB MIDI. Next, we need to define what we want to do with the MIDI. So you click on setup, remote input setup, MIDI remotes, and then we're going to create our 16 multiples because I know that I'm going to be mapping 16 keys and we're going to go, we're going to say what we want the type to be. Let's just collapse this window a bit so we can see a bit better. Uh, so we're going to, we, you can do a couple of different types. You can do an executor, which is the normal option where we're essentially defining what we want to control. So let me just select all those. Executor. We can define a page for them. So that's just fader pages. So we're going to set that to 1, so it's fader page 1, and the executor we want to control is 101. And if you go 101 and then type through, it'll auto-complete them for you. And then we've got the option of buttons. So on the 101 ones, we only have a button 1 option. If you were doing, you know, a device that you could do uh, MIDI devices that would use faders, you could do them off faders, but in our case we just want to trigger button 1. The next thing we need to do is we need to work out from our MIDI device what information it's being set up on. So if there's any MIDI configuration application such as this device that I'm using, the uh, MIDI fighter comes with an application to configure it and in that I've defined the channel and the notes that it's going to come in on and there's also a graph or sorry, an image on our group if you're using a MIDI fighter to show all the channels. But the easiest way is to plug it in and press the, one of the buttons and see what happens. So down the bottom we see new command, note on and off. And it's saying channel 2, note 0. Sorry, note 80. And then the volume is 127, which is the maximum of MIDI. So all we need to do is plug in this information. I know that all my notes are going to be number 2. Just because that's the way I've configured them. Oh, sorry, all my channels are going to be number two. And my notes are going to be different. So on the MIDI fighter, because of the way I orientate my device, I have the USB cable at the top. All my numbers are backwards. So I know that my first button is 80. And then if I do the same, I press the one beside it. That's 81. 82. 83. And then the second row, 76, 77, 
78 and 79. Third row, 72. Let's just confirm I've got my numbers right. Yep. 72. 73. 74. And 75. And if I ever forget the numbers, I'm literally just looking in the feedback down the bottom and checking and seeing that it's giving me the right numbers. 68. 69, 70, and 71. And now when we trigger something, it's going to say it's firing remote 68. And it's going to give us the information that we want. Now, once that's set up, we can go back to our nice little playback thing and we can see that we can test all our buttons and check that they all work. So I'm just going to toggle them all off manually. And we're going to check them all working. Cool, that's all of them. So, obviously you can change the type of buttons you're using. You can make them flash buttons. You could do whatever you want. On my MIDI device, I've got four different page layers. So I can change the colors of them and have different channels on those so that they can trigger different things. But that's basic MIDI setup on MA2 with a single device. Of course, if you're using a fader based device, your, uh, your setup would differ a little uh, simply because you'd then be controlling the fader. However, take note that MIDI uh, does not go up to the normal DMX value of 255, it only goes up to 127, so your faders won't be as precise as they would be on, let's say, a DMX desk. Thank you for watching, uh, leave any questions you want in the comments below and feel free to send us an email or a message via our website which is consultraining.com. Thank you very much.